Hi everyone, my name is Osman or Az Ahmed. I'm an interventional radiologist at the University of Chicago. And today I have the privilege and honor of presenting uh, to you all about the latest and greatest in liver directed therapies. So, you know, I always have to start when I talk about interventional radiology by explaining what it is that I do. And specifically, um, I focus a lot in the treatment of cancer um, or oncology. And so we have a sort of a niche or subspecialty within interventional radiology known as interventional oncology. And what interventional oncology is, it's a minimally invasive image guided methods to treat cancer. And what we're doing when interventional oncology is we're directly targeting tumors to minimize the collateral damage. So it's not really surgery because it's minimally invasive. We take, make a very small puncture uh, in the artery or we make a really small puncture in the skin uh, to get to where we need to go. And what this leads to is a quicker recovery and a shorter length of hospital stay. And so what are the procedures that we perform? And they're really divided into two main categories. We have uh, what we call intra-arterial procedures and what we have what we call percutaneous procedures. And intra-arterial procedures are where, as I mentioned, we take a really small tube or catheter, go through the artery, either in the wrist or groin usually, um, and, and essentially fish a small tube about one millimeter in size, um, all the way to the blood vessels that feed the tumors that we are targeting. And once we get a catheter there, we can deliver uh, a myriad of things, but partic you know, specifically we can deliver particles, chemotherapy, or radiation directly to the tumor. And these procedures, as you may well know, are known as bland embolization, chemoembolization, or radioembolization. Um, with percutaneous procedures, instead of going through the arteries to the tumors, we go directly to them, um, uh, meaning we take a needle directly from the outside and go through the skin directly into the tumor, and, and then we either destroy that tissue by either freezing it, heating it up, or using some other modalities that we'll talk about. And that procedure is known as percutaneous ablation. So what is the interlap between interventional oncology and neuroendocrine cancer? We often treat patients with neuroendocrine cancer in our institution. And specifically, we're treating a lot of net patients because metastatic disease to the liver with neuroendocrine tumor is very common and is often one of the first sites of spread that we see. And because the liver is an organ that we can treat with both these intra-arterial and percutaneous methods, we're often treating patients with neuroendocrine cancer. So for the rest of the talk, I'm actually going to focus mostly on percutaneous ablation because we've seen a lot of sort of cool advancements on this side of the field. With intra-arterial therapy, we have been doing radioembolization, chemoembolization, and bland embolization for quite a while now. And those so treatments are sort of well-established. However, with ablation, it's a very attractive option when it's possible because it actually leads to very good outcomes. When you take a needle directly into a tumor, you can minimize the collateral damage. You're just burning or, or, or killing the tumor right at the needle tip. And the best part about ablation is that a lot of the response rates for most cancers are actually very similar to surgical resection. So you'll see my colleagues in surgical oncology or, or surgeons actually do resections and also intraoperative ablations as well at the same time. The reason they do intraoperative ablations is because they actually lead to outcomes that are very similar to actually just cutting it out. So because of this potential curative advantage, we really like to do ablation whenever we can. Unfortunately, not all patients are candidates for ablative therapies. So that's why we're not always doing it. But more importantly, you know, ablation, while it seems very straightforward in, in theory to just take a needle and put it into the tumor, it can be very challenging in certain situations. These are some of the scenarios where it can be challenging. One, it could be very difficult to see the tumor. So if you can't see the tumor, you can't take a needle there. Tumors oftentimes can be near very critical structures that you don't want to potentially burn or freeze like blood vessels or adjacent organs. And then it also still requires a puncture of the skin. So there's going to be a risk of bleeding or infection because the liver specifically is a very vascular organ. So it has a lot of blood vessels in it. So, so let's, let's focus now on what are these updates uh, with interventional oncology and neuroendocrine cancer. There's really three major advancements that I want to touch on today that help us treat patients with cancer. One is methods to improve visualization of difficult to see tumors. As I mentioned, uh, a lot of times if we can't see the tumor, we can't treat it. Secondly, ways to improve safety of ablation of, for tumors near these critical structures that I mentioned. 
And then the third is, you know, potential future advances that actually may allow for non-invasive ablation. So we're going to touch on all these three potential limitations of ablation and, and how we're sort of trying to push the limits there. So in terms of methods to improve visualization, as I said, small tumors, they're, if they're very small, they can be very difficult to visualize during ablation. So when I see patients, I tell them, you know, it's a good thing that your tumor is very small because that means it's, it hasn't grown a lot but also is a bad thing that makes it very difficult to find it. And again, as I mentioned, if you can't see the tumor, you can't treat it. So we're now utilizing some new advances in imaging to actually help us visualize the tumors better so we can perform these targeted ablations. So what is that technology? When we do these procedures, we typically either use an X-ray machine or a CT scanner or an ultrasound. Now we actually have technologies that actually can combine all of these. So we can actually have all of these imaging sort of systems available to us in one room. And what does that allow? What that allows is we're able to actually utilize the strengths of each of these imaging modalities. So with x-ray, we actually can place a catheter into the arteries of the liver and we can inject dye directly into the liver to actually light it up. And then using the CT scanner, we can actually visualize it perfectly and, and guide a needle into the tumor. So here's an example to, to illustrate that. And now we are actually, you know, very commonly doing this, this type of procedure. And we have actually, you know, uh, uh, written this up and, and published this in our journal to kind of show others the, the technique that we're utilizing. So this is a CT scan of the liver. It's a single slice image here. And you can not see, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little speck there uh, of a patient that has a tumor there. And that's, um, you know, as you can imagine, is, is barely perceptible on the, that was the diagnostic CT scan that the patient had with contrast. When we bring the patient for ablation, we, we can't give that dye. And so it's almost impossible, as you can see, to see this lesion and really understand, you know, where to position this needle. So as I mentioned here, barely perceptible on this non-contrast CT. So what we did, as I mentioned, is with this now new technology that we have, we actually under x-ray can place a, a catheter into the artery of the liver. And then now we can inject dye to visualize it. And then after we do that, we can switch over to the CT. So you can see here we've injected dye and now it's a pretty obvious thing to see there. And you can see now when we switch over to CT, how obvious that lesion is there. Now it's very clearly visualized. You know, you don't need to be a radiologist to say there's something abnormal there. So once you see that, now we can actually position our needle directly into the tumor with the dye being injected continuously to visualize it. Now we can place the needle perfectly. Also notice that when we originally saw that CT scan, how small that lesion is, but when we inject the dye directly into the tumor, we actually see that it's much larger. So not only are we able to precisely position the needle, we can actually make sure that we're getting a, a complete treatment as well, because this lesion was actually bigger than we initially had thought. So you can see here, we did the uh, ablation. This is what it looks like after the ablation. We can actually inject dye again. You can see little black dots inside of there. That's actually gas from us burning the tumor. So that tumor is now completely dead. And on the initial follow-up scan, you can see that there's no active tumor here. This is actually, you know, we've injected dye. And because this is not lighting up anymore, that means this is consistent with dead tumor. And we, are, we call this the post-ablation cavity or, 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 or a hole. So, you know, that was the first thing that we wanted to talk about is, you know, what about tumors that are small that you can't see, but what about um, tumors that are near critical structures? This is not an uncommon problem. And unfortunately, uh, this tends to happen a lot. And uh, one of the reasons we commonly can't do ablation. And when I talked about ablation, you know, in the beginning, I mentioned that we're taking a needle and we're either burning or freezing it. And that's called thermal ablation. So when you thermally ablate something, that means you're using heat or, 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 or cold energy to, to kill a tumor. Um, and in neuroendocrine tumor, we primarily use heat um, and we primarily use a technology called microwave. And microwave is very, very effective, but it unfortunately has the potential to burn or damage critical nearby structures. And these critical structures in the liver, there's plenty of them, unfortunately. There's bile ducts, there's a gallbladder, there's nerves uh, where the body wall are, the intestines. So we actually now have newer technologies that actually are non-thermal. So they're not using heat um, or cold energy to kill tumors they're using non-thermal energies to kill the tumors. And that actually has a lot of potential to reduce the risk for damage of these structures. And one of the most common new technologies is known as IRE or irreversible electroporation. And with IRE, what we're essentially doing is we're electrocuting a tumor. And instead of placing a needle into the tumor directly, we actually place very small, tiny needles around the tumor. And what that does is it creates an electrical charge or electrical field between all these 
needles that we place and actually electrocutes the cells by poking little holes in them and causing cell death. And the beauty of IRE actually is that it doesn't impact all tissues equally. It actually has the potential to protect or not disrupt structures with a lot of collagen. And fortunately, all the things that I just mentioned that we're worried about have a lot of collagen in them. So they actually is safe around uh, structures that have collagen, as well as it's safe around things like blood vessels, because it doesn't impact the blood vessels as well. So here's an example of a patient that had a tumor in a very uh, sort of tricky area. This is in, actually in the pelvis. And you can see here, the image on the bottom right is the PET scan. And the PET scan really makes it obvious of, to show you where, the, where there is a tumor right there. And we were consulted to try to treat this with targeted therapy. And uh, we felt that doing a thermal ablation with heat or cold energy would be unsafe because the rectum is right there, as well as a lot of critical nerves travel in your pelvis, like your sciatic nerve. So what we did was we decided to do irreversible electroporation or IRE. And you can see here, we placed the needles in a sequential fashion. Again, we're trying to bracket the tumor, not put a needle through it. So we placed needles in a triangle here because it's relatively small. So we only needed three needles. And this red circle sort of illustrates where the tumor is. So you can see that we've now created a triangle around the tumor. And this is what it looks like from outside of the skin. So again, these are tiny, tiny needles. These are 19 gauge needles. So uh, smaller than the size of a pen. We proceed with the IRE or irreversible electroporation, and this is what it looks like afterwards. There's, again, you can see gas in the area to show that we've actually killed that tissue. And this patient did uh, very fine. No, no, had some very mild nerve sort of numbness after the procedure, but that resolved after a week or two. No damage to the rectum, no major complications related to this procedure. So again, uh, very safe. And you can see here that that area shows you where uh, we did our damage to the to the tumor. So Finally, I want to wrap up by talking about uh, if we can make ablation even safer. As I mentioned, no matter no matter how you know, no matter what we're using currently, um, it's still percutaneous, meaning that we still have to break the skin. So if we break the skin, there's always going to be a risk of bleeding, um, even though it's less invasive uh, and far safer than doing open surgery. It's still risky, uh, or still has some risk because we're we are actually um, breaking the skin. So there's a new technology known as hysteropsy that is uh, a very exciting in our field. And the, what's exciting about it is that it actually may eliminate the process of placing needles through the skin. It's actually completely non-invasive and can still do what we're talking about. And so what is hysteropsy? Hysteropsy is actually using ultrasound beams to create cavitation. So imagine ultrasound as a, as a series of sound waves. If you can converge those sound waves into one point, um, if you can target them onto one spot, you can actually create what's known as cavitation. And a cavitation is basically, imagine like an asteroid hits you know, a planet, it creates a big crater, that's cavitation. And so the way it does that is it creates these tiny, tiny bubbles called a bubble cloud that ultimately lead to cavitation and tumor destruction, if, especially if you, uh, you know, again, if you focus that beam onto a tumor. And again, the beautiful thing about this technology is it actually still preserves those collagenous structures because it's non-thermal. And also uh, another great benefit is that it doesn't utilize radiation. Ultrasound doesn't use any radiation. So it's a, it's a non-invasive radiation-free procedure that also preserves critical structures. And this is actually an example of from a cadaver lab that, that we had done. And you can see this is what it does. This is what cavitation looks like. It looks like an asteroid has hit this part of the liver and actually created a crater. Okay. Again, as I mentioned, this is all non-invasively. There is nothing done to the patient from the inside. This is all from the outside. And what's exciting about hysteropsy, we're, you know, we're still very much learning about it. The first in-human studies were completed in Europe. The first trial in the United States has just started. We are one of 10 sites, fortunately, um, to be part of this trial. And we just treated our first patient. These are images from, from that procedure. You can see there's a water bath that has to be placed over the patient to help the ultrasound waves come in. This is all robotic. So you can see the robot on the bottom right-hand screen. Again, uh, this is a non-sterile procedure because there's nothing invasive. Um, that's me controlling the robot. And this is what it looks like in real life. You can see the robot is doing the hysteropsy, the ultrasound waves that looks like they're you know, showering. It looks like kind of like a thunderstorm there. That's actually the bubble clouds, but we're actually focusing it on the area where it's red and that's targeting and killing the tumor. So in conclusion, you know, interventional therapies are non-surgical treatments that directly target tumor to minimize collateral damage. As I've mentioned, we have both intraarterial and percutaneous options available to us. Among the percutaneous methods, we have multiple types of ablation to directly place needles into tumor and, and to destroy them. 
And the recent advancements that I've mentioned have helped us to better visualize tumors, use non-thermal methods to help treat tumors that are nearby critical structures. And then most importantly, we have future technologies on the immediate horizon that actually may help us make these procedures completely non-invasive, which is really exciting. And I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I am always happy to chat with you either by email or even uh, on Twitter, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.